pick a card, that which you really want. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you at your reading. Hi friends, my name is Crystal with Psychic MD and I'm here to do another pick a card reading for you. Now, while we set the intention and selection portion of the reading, I want to share really quick with you, I had the coolest experience with a bunch of squirrels. Yeah, I know it's kind of funny to think about, but they apparently use the tree in front of me as a launching pad. And initially I thought they were playing and I was like, oh, you were so cute. And I was so excited. And if I was a child, I'd be squealing in delight. But instead I was like, oh my God, you're so cute. That kind of a thing. And come to find out by the time a third squirrel sprung here and ran up after them, they were actually fighting. <laughs> I'm like, you're not allowed to fight. What's going on here? So we're going to find out a little bit about what's going on for you. I'm going to be using a new deck. And this deck is called the Witching Hour Oracle. And I'm completely, completely fascinated. So I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one as well. So... The Witching Hour Oracle. Let us get your cards. What do you need to know? What do you need to know to attain that one thing that you desperately want, that you want badly? Let's not say desperate because that is very difficult to manifest when we're desperate. <laughs> the elements, back to basics. Pile number two, leadership, high priestess. And pile three, you are going to be the Book of Spells. Take a peek at these beauties. Oh, come now. See what draws your eye if I don't burn them first. Right? And I'll see you at your reading. Hi, pile one. My name is Grisel with Psychic MD. If you missed the intro, shockingly, it's still the same name if you did not. And you chose the elements. Back to basics. This is what's going to help you to attain that which you really most desire. Whatever that thing is, and whenever that thing is, these readings are, as per usual, timeless. So let's get rid of that. Senisa. I don't even know what that's called in English right now, this moment. Ash, that's what that's called, Ash. Here we go. Pile number one, back to basics. I feel like in some ways you are feeling like perhaps you have strayed far and wide and long and far, once again, um, from the place, your original roots, like back, going back to where you came from, basically. This is just feeling comfortable in your own skin, feeling acknowledged, feeling seen, feeling loved and cared for. This is having a roof over your head, nothing fancy, not concerned with bells or whistles, and certainly not what those bells and whistles look like necessarily, right? I'm looking at perhaps connecting with somebody who is older than you. This could be the matriarch of the family, patriarch of the family, or somebody who is considered to be the glue to holding the family together. And that's quite a beautiful thing. And family, of course, can indicate whatever you think family means. Doesn't have to be your traditional stuff. So that's entirely up to your interpretation. But let's see a little bit. Let's do an energy check. Mm. Energy check for pile number one. That which they want most. What is that, please? I'd like to know a little bit about energy check. So I see two hands being held open like this, not unlike these two hands, and awaiting for something to be put into those hands. Like you've been waiting for something. And 10 of cups. So 10 of cups tells me that you've been waiting for emotional gratification. You've been waiting perhaps for emotional acknowledgement, acknowledgement from family, from people that are close to you. I feel like you've been waiting to be acknowledged that you make a difference. That could be a really big thing. Energy check. Oh, it's like that. Okay, look at that. The world. So this just sprung from my deck and left out exit stage left. 
So some of you guys want to return to a situation that perhaps is just kind of like over and done with, and you have to factor in a different way of doing things if you want the same vibe, the same idea or ideal. And this could be stating that perhaps you've lost like a family member or people are no longer close to where they used to be. You want to recreate that idea, which most of us tend to run patterns in our own lives until we kind of get a therapist or wake up and we realize, hey, I've done this before. I played a different part in it, but this cycle has been part of my life for a long, long time. So this is stating that with the world shooting exit stage left, <clears throat> I feel like you don't want things to end. And maybe it's like a dream and a fantasy that you want to kind of continue. You don't want to revamp it or change it. You're like, no, it must be this way in order for me to feel seen, to feel heard, to feel safe and complete, to feel close. It's got to be like the same way with these same people. And I'm just going to propose that perhaps that's not really realistic. Everybody doesn't have the same vision, same idea, and the same desire. So you may need to expand that idea a little bit, tweak it a little bit until it actually fits into something that can give you your emotional gratification. The two of hazards, yeah. So I feel like you've been doing some juggling, some changing things around. And with this juggling, I feel like you've been monitoring the temperature. And this could be temperature of weather, but... Most likely it's going to be temperature people around you you're getting the vibe. Okay, are they kind of in the mood for this? And that sounds really kind of weird. But what I mean basically is this. Feeling the temperature of do people um, <clears throat> miss these times as well? Is it just you? Do you have siblings that you kind of want to reminisce and talk to about and say, hey, you know, do you remember when these times do you wish that those times were the same or is this just me kind of doing wishful thinking and in la la land dreamland that kind of a thing so i think that you've extended yourself a little bit just to see everybody's core temperature and see if it kind of matches yours what else do we need to see for an energy check so we have the king of swords lying right here address that in just a moment then we have my favorite queen, the queen of wands, and this is a mover and a shaker, okay? So this person could be stating that you feel like you have been nurse to everybody. You have been there to really take care of and create and do and get creative and do all the things necessary. She even borrowed somebody's hand in order to proceed and move forward because she herself does not have a hand of her own. So you could be considered um, innovative, inventive, creative, you could be a designer, a maker, is that, I think that's what they call them, entrepreneur, any of those little labels could fit you. And typically it's going to be a multitude of labels. So I feel like you're in need of a little bit of light yourself, a little bit of resuscitation, a little bit of help. And that's why we're here today. So you, you want to go back to basics. And this King of Swords, I feel like this could be running interference in your life. Let's see if we can get some more light here. So with this King, this person is the one who takes trophies, who is aggressive and sharing, well, when I was your age, I used to this, that, and the other. And it's like, well, they didn't live during our age or your age, whatever that age happens to be. And even if they're the same age bracket, I'm sure that they had different demographics, different privileges and different challenges than you. Regardless, this person's narrative is going to be different. They're interjecting themselves, whether in physical form or interjecting themselves in a brain tape that you have where you continue playing these tapes that were told to you of long ago that are of no use. And the reason I get that is because it's laying on its side and it's like back and forth, back and forth. When I was your age, we just used to do the best and just get along when I, you know, or whatever the label is, or maybe it's, it could be saying, well, you know, I went to college and you just didn't do that, or you didn't uphold your, your side of the family contract, unspoken agreements. I don't know your life. Only you know your life and you're going to know what these things are. Basically, it's somebody who has a cutting word for you. Basically, they're not going to be that supportive. <laughs> I'm just going to say, and it's going to oscillate between you kind of believe them and you don't, or you buy into the narrative and you don't simply because they came up sideways. And last card for current energy check, two of wands. Yeah, you got to make a decision. You got to make a choice. And you do have the choice of two very compelling things. 
and whatever those two things are for you. I feel like you run a little bit, you run rabbit, no you don't, but you get the point. You run a little bit like, oh my goodness, which way do I go? Which way do I go, George? Not <clears throat> to quote a cartoon, but here we are. And I feel like you could be thinking, okay, which way do I indeed turn? Because if I choose this path, it's like a commitment. What if I chose the wrong path? And you can't continue keeping your neck on a swivel thinking, oh my goodness, did I choose wrong? Is the other path, is the path behind me better than the current path that I'm on? No, but you can integrate certain elements and things in order to make your path maybe similar or what you deem similar is a path that you did not choose. So basically what I'm getting at, you can bring along different things into the path that you're choosing that you think you may have been left behind. Why? Because we're constantly manifesting different things, okay? So don't be afraid, so afraid of what it is that you're choosing because whatever choice you make is going to be the correct one. And don't second guess yourself. That is the worst, okay? And definitely don't be listening to people that make you second guess yourself. I guess that would be the first worst and second worst is second guessing yourself, not sure. No, 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 the other way around. Okay, moving on. Coco's like, get with it, mom. Get with the program here. So you could be feeling a little bit listless, a little bit disheartened, not sure where to go, lacking clarity and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move these guys away. And we're gonna get some more cards in here. So that which you most desire, which is family support, resilience, a direction, a sense of community, of compassion, of support, of love. And certainly clarity. How can pile number one attain these things? Seems like a tall list, but really it goes back to the basics. Oh, channeler. Oh my goodness. And I had no intention on taking these cards whatsoever because I already have some creative cards on here. But here we are. I wanted to play with the wrong cards. Here we go. Ah, playing with the wrong cards, huh? <clears throat> so I feel like you could be kind of dabbling and taking elements into your current life and your current journey that you did not expect to take into account at all. Just the same way that I picked up these cards and I had no intention of using them. They're just comforting if I need them. They're right there. Moving on. Channeler. With a heightened consciousness having power to channel divine messages, you have the ability to open people's eyes to the unforeseen. Pile number one, you could be a channeler. You could help people to understand that there are messages from the other side, from their higher self, that they need to actually get quiet, get centered, get grounded to be able to get their own messages. We don't all need a guru. We don't all need someone to map out a path for us to follow. Sometimes that path is mapped out within us already and we can easily find it should we just try. Okay, here we go. Sweetheart, <laughs> you live from love, seeing the divinity and love beneath the surface and shaping others' worlds and experiences through the reception of the heart. And this could have a lot to do with what it is that you desire and perhaps you were like the baby of the family or consider the favorite or consider coddle right? And I mean, who wouldn't want memories like that to go back to? I don't really know what that's like, but that's kind of cool. I'm going to say that uh, if you were not considered all of those things when you were younger, I certainly feel like you're considered the favorite now. You could be the favorite friend, the favorite employer, the favorite boss, the favorite cousin, the favorite tia, sister, whatever. So <clears throat> I think that part of your destiny and part of what it is that path that you're on and that thing that you want most i feel like the sense of community you already have it because you bring it to the table you are the beginning and you are the end if you stray away from who you most authentically are then i feel like this isn't going to manifest in quite the same way at all um i feel like being authentic and just simply being you continue being loving and uh, i don't get any like spoiled vibes or pretty uh what they call it? Pr pretty pr privilege in here at all I definitely feel like it's just a desire to give and to love others and to uphold others' dreams and things like that. Um, just like a, a communal sub, communal support. Did I even say that right? Coco, come correct me. Come on. No? Okay. So the next thing we have right here, this gorgeous card, is Descendant. You come from a long line of healers, herbalists, and wise folks. Their ancient knowing resonates today deep in your spirit. You will know yourself by knowing them. 
So that might be a cue and a clue for you to be able to look into maybe herbs a little bit more. I think that you can find something that resonates on maybe even making tinctures or uh, in modern day medicines and things like that. Girl, when I say I see that tree swaying here and it scared the tar out of me, I am not joking. <laughs> Okay. There's not even like a real wind. I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. Moving on. Yeah, that just happened. That just happened. I can't get all this on here. Here we go. Okay. And we have uninhibited. Can we get closer? Yep. Here we go. Your unbridled erotic energy really you are unbridled erotic energy in its purest tantalizing form having the ability to help others release sensual oh sexual fears and become more authentic in their sacred expression okay so maybe this is going to take you back to your roots what feels good about you what feels good to you as well and one thing right away that i'm getting because i thought well that was quite unexpected it was a turn but really is it it's going back to your basic elements and when i say basic i don't mean it in the in the modern way that people are like, I'm so basic or she's so basic, quite the insult, isn't it? I'm saying that this has to do with your sensuality, the way you move, the way you think about things, the way you enjoy life, what gives you pleasure, what makes you smile, and all the oddities, quote unquote, that come along with that. Now, the example I'm going to give you is the way that I stare out into the forest. and <laughs> I was watching the squirrels, if you didn't look at the intro, um, the squirrels, I thought they were playing and jumping from one tree to the other. And I've never seen them up close, literally. This tree is probably maybe six feet away from me. And I was mesmerized when I saw that fluffy tail jump from one, one tree to the other. Then I saw three of them in succession. I thought they were playing, but no, they were not playing. I was gleeful until I realized that they were actually fighting. <laughs> And then I was amused at myself. So I feel like just going back to basics and being really your most raw, authentic self, having the ability to laugh at ourselves, having the ability to enjoy Mother Nature in whatever form, whatever perspective you have. Because honestly, I mean, most people would know things like this by now. And I always, you know, cite reason number 9,099 why I'm not part of this. <laughs> why I'm not from these here parts is because th things like that take me by surprise. But I feel like you can have like a joy in life regardless of what perspective. And that is getting back to the basics, getting back to the elements, um, getting your feet in grass, touching grass, hugging a tree, things like that. G give, giving yourself a salt bath is going to be really good. Even a smoke bath if you don't have a tub per se, this can help you set you on the correct trajectory. Okay. I think that that's going to really help you to be able to get back to the basics and get that feeling, that desire of what you want. But one thing that we did already talk about is don't expect it to come in the same form necessarily. I think you'll have some elements of the same form, but be open to the wisdom of the universe around you. Be open to the people and the energy around you. People are placed around you for a reason. It is not by mistake. It is by design. And I feel like it's a lot by chemistry. It's like what you vibe with. You tend to attract, okay? So I think trusting in the universe a little bit, gaining clarity, doing a vision board can all be helpful things. And we are going to be looking at one last thing for you. Why? Because I love to change it up. So Gebo, oh Hebo. <clears throat> that smoke deep in your lungs is no bueno. So let's see what we have here. Dun, 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 dun. Gifts. Hmm? Did we say gifts? Look at that swan too. Beautiful. On top of that flower. It almost looks like it actually does a lotus flower. And the lotus flower, you know, it reminds me of that book, No um, no Mud, No Lotus. And the lotus is born from hardship. It's born from mud. It's born from, or dare I say, ugliness. And look at how beautiful it blooms. And yet this swan is right on top of it. The swan, as we have all kind of um, surmised by now, really have a difficult task. Well, they make a difficult task look easy and that they propel themselves around the water in such a graceful manner. And yet, if you peek underneath the water, the little the little web feet are pedaling furiously. And yet, this swan is taking refuge on top of the lotus, okay? And I feel like this dates a lot. Maybe you've had come from hardship and darkness and 
I heard misery. Okay, don't judge. I don't judge here. I've I've felt personally in my heart miserable and sick many a time. Um, but I feel like this is a message for you that all the things that you feel like were kind of like a pile of garbage at times or things were so difficult, that is what's going to prop you up and help you give you rest, okay? The rest that you need. But it's also going to showcase who it is that you've become and out of hardship, like what beauty can be born from that, okay? I'm hoping that that resonates with you. If you're liking these kind of readings, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. I actually want to continue with a rune card here. And it says gifts, partnership, sacrifice, fair exchange, and honor. And yeah, so I feel like you've undergone a lot of different changes, as we all have, obviously. And you're going to be able to welcome in your own family, your own support system, your own connectivity. And I think about all the different kinds of mushrooms that are out in the wild. I don't know a darn thing about mushrooms other than what I see on the property out here, which is pretty cool. I should include them in a reading at some point. But um, I do notice that they're all different kinds and they have like black tops and some are like yellow and some are like thin and they're just so different looking and the variations of them are fascinating. And I think that you yourself are being able to piece together a life that is really quite beautiful and maybe you have like a fourth of what you really desire or what's on your dream board on your roadmap you know what you want but continue what you're doing i feel like you're doing it right just don't get stuck in a mental template that doesn't work for you that's outmoded allow people to show you who they are and be inclusive with people that are reliable and are of the cloth that you want them to be and i think that that's how you're going to gain this dream of yours and this support okay you have a lot of uh, ancestors that are supporting your journey be confident in that so with that, much love to you, and until next time, namaste. Hi friends, my name is Griselle with Psychic MD, and I'm here to do your reading. Pile number two, if you chose the High Priestess, then this message is for you. We're going to go ahead and get out any energies, residual energies from before, and we are going to proceed with your reading. Now, first thing that I have to notice when I actually repositioned your card on the table is how this lady appears to be levitating on a bed of light, okay? You could be somebody who really meditates a lot, who's connected to spirit. You could be somebody who easily can connect and connect to spirit if you wanted to. I know a lot of us like do things and then we kind of doubt. So I feel like I would not be surprised if that were your story as well. So I feel like we're going to do an energy check about what it is that you want. And maybe perhaps you're somebody who can actually astral project. You can call in the cosmos quite easily. I'm looking at her, what presumably they're like tattoos. And you can have a connection to sacred geometry. Um, <clears throat> the flower of life could be very important to you. And of course, we have the word leadership right here. So I feel like you are different, quite different from your peers, from other people. Um, your third eye is, I mean... I mean, what can I say about it? I feel like your third eye is wide open. And I think that you're known for this as well. But I would like to know what you want. Because it seems like you, this is everything, is it not? And maybe that's just my perspective. So energy check for pile number two. Hello, hello. Okay, we have the star. We have the hermit and the star. That's quite interesting. It appears to be oppositional. Oppositional? Yep, oppositional. I'm like, yep. Okay. Anyways, so we have here healing, deep healing. And maybe you've undergone like a period of hermitude or you're about to go into one. So I feel like it should be this way, but it came out that way. So perhaps this is a time that um, you've undergone that maybe you had ideas and ideals about what you wanted. And I feel like maybe this is stating that you connected with your higher, with source, with your higher, uh, person your higher self is what I meant to say okay I'm a little bit thrown off I have to admit about the sequence of these cards right here because the way that I would expect once again is that they would be f flipped around <laughs> I kept saying the f, f, f okay so I did expect for them to be kind of flipped around and I'm a little bit like discombobulated gathering my my thoughts here I want to take a peek at this because you know when I think about 
going into period hermit too, this is about pulling away from people, pulling away from everything, just kind of do your own thing. Yes, can it be eating a box of bonbons by yourself? Hush, that would be me. But listen, for real, this is about withdrawing. This is about gaining your own sensibilities. This is about regaining your power. This is about deciding and re-examining your life. Okay, is this good for me? Do I still want this? Am I in the right trajectory? Am I making the right decisions? Have I made these bad decisions? And what can I learn and glean from them? All the things. This is also a period of time when you have been healing. Healing and going within and really trying to understand things. So I feel like if you haven't done this at all, yet then this is what is coming up for you <clears throat> and maybe perhaps this is stating that you've undergone this period where you kind of alchemized you achieved a level of mastery of alchemy and things are changing i feel like with a star card right here i think that you are highly decorated which means to me that you are maybe deeply respected by your peers and people around you that they actually know that you're connected with spirit i don't feel like you're a closet warrior although you could have been once upon a time and this could be saying that perhaps you are the example these squirrels are cracking me up <laughs> oh my goodness i don't know if we're playing tag if we're like hey Hey, catch me if you can, catch me outside. I don't know what's going on here. But listen, the bottom line, I feel like you serve is an anchor for many people, okay? And definitely you need a period of time where it's just going to be you. Otherwise, people can siphon your energy. Um, not meaning to necessarily, but they can. And it's the same three that are just, they're playing. They can't be fighting. I don't know what's going on here. But anyways, you definitely serve as an anchor. Because if you look at this little image... There's an anchor and then you have the star tethered to that metal right here. And this I feel like is quite militant. Like you could be very much staunch about, okay, this is how it goes. You got to meditate. You got to get up. You got to cleanse your area. You got to cleanse your energy. And perhaps you do things at work like that, that are similar in fashion. And this could be widely known. But I feel like also you could have some of you guys. Oh my goodness. Here we go. Some of you guys could have a stalker who is um, doing nothing but trying to glean information upon you, about you. And what interests me about that storyline anyways, is that, well, people think that they'll stop their stalking to gain information simply like, oh, well, let's see what so-and-so is doing and whatnot. I feel like inadvertently spirit is teaching them lessons about themselves and it's things that they are actually gleaning to bring in to their higher self in order to kind of learn, grow and evolve or trigger, right? And I feel like, let me propose to you, and I know this isn't like necessarily what you're trying to achieve just yet. I five minutes into it and I missed that mark. Here we go. But I'm going to say that with the Hermit card, this tells me that maybe people are looking towards you for answers or at you. It's like, where are you at? You like what's true? Or you have this reputation. What about you? And they're coming in for maybe gossip or the tea or whatever, you know they're coming in for but ultimately it's going to serve to help elevate and heal them as well so i wouldn't worry too much about that but let's find out a little bit more about what it is that you most desire i feel like maybe you have what it is that you most desire is just being like a high priest or high priestess somebody who can really connect with spirit and i think that that's where your joy is and i think dare i say the sweet spot is right there okay that's an optical term if you know you know moving on Yep. Asa Hazard. So you could be saying, yeah, well, this is my thing and I've got all this, but where's my money? Where's my bag? <laughs> okay. So maybe we just need to be a little bit more grounded in our finances. I feel like you could be waiting for something, but here this states that you could be having an offer given to you soon. And this offer can come from none other than the hermit. This could be somebody who has been watching you for quite some time wanting to really kind of maybe even throw in their lot with you. This could, of course, be a hater or two. And, uh, but I feel like most of all, it is somebody who is wanting to come towards you. This could be like a Virgo energy who is interested in maybe building something with you and offering you something solid, which is interesting. And this could be what it is that you dream of, as discombobulated as that sounds. And the reason why is I think that some of you guys are a bit like myself. We don't have like necessarily... I want to achieve like $10,000 uh, in a month and this is my financial goal and I want to have this kind of a car and this money in the bank and this, I tend to be a lot more airy than that. Um, 
And you could be like myself, we're more concerned with like spirit. It's like, well, I want to be able to do readings for people that really change our lives, that build their self-esteem, that really help them. That would be like my edge on things with this healing card. And you could be somebody like myself. So that could be a thing for you as well. Show me a little bit more about pile number two, please. So basically it's like nothing necessarily in concrete. And this is saying, spirit saying that you need to kind of materialize things more in a concrete manner because it's great to be spiritual and connected. But this really serves your purpose. This serves to give you peace. And the world needs something a little bit more material from you, a little bit more in the present, a little bit more 3D. Ouch, I just hurt my feelings. Here we go. The chariot. This is about a trip. So either you need to make a trip or someone wants to make a trip towards you. This is about unloading dead weight that no longer is helpful to you. This is about following a path and alliances that maybe you wouldn't have expected. Interesting. This is about cutting off allies that are not allying. This is about doing things that really don't mathematically, the math doesn't add up, right? The math isn't mathing. And if that's happening, then you need to call a spade a spade or whatever it is. Call it for what it is. And I think that you're in the process of doing this and understanding that in order for you to elevate and yes, bring things down to the 3D materialize in order to help other people perhaps, that you need to actually run with people that are on the same trajectory as you. And maybe this is calling in your own people like this on the 3D level. Pile number two, let me know how this is resonating. I know this is a little bit muddled. I personally am kind of resonating with this oddly enough. So pile number two, energy check. Yep, Ten of Swords. <clears throat> Once again, cutting off everything that hinders and even like understanding it's like, okay, I've made choices and decisions that were not in my own best interest. I decided that it was really good to really give to people that were grabby grabby. And now it's a little bit time for stabby stabby to get rid getting rid of things that, uh, you know, if people are trying to demand things from you and they're not equal giving or at least energetically balancing then it's not worth your time and I think that you know it's been quite the drag for you that you've had to haul people around like dead weight like this card is stating so I think that you're cutting out all things that don't serve you certainly the, these intestines don't look like they're healthy at all um and usually this person I think of is saying okay I've cut off everything else and it's like what part do you want do you want more intestine do you want more heart do you want more of my arm do you want my limb because I've given all of you but I feel like you you you're done with being self-sacrificial you're done being the martyr you're done giving to everybody else just because they're hungry and they want like a burrito doesn't mean you're the, you're the one to make it or you have to like even pay attention they have two hands presumably unless they're involved in this here mess we don't know but I'm gonna say that you get the point it's like a horrible metaphor I just made up you get the point. You could have people wanting to step step on your neck and you're like, okay, well, go ahead if that makes you happy. But I don't feel like you're in a position right now where you have to roll over and put up with any of that. So I feel like this is eliminating all that is dragging you under, all that makes you feel like maybe you have to hide and hibernate once again and go within. You don't have to. And I feel like you're just hitting a cycle where you just need to drop things and let go of things that are not suiting you anymore. If you've been here before, if you're feeling victimized, if you're feeling like you're surrounded by people that don't understand and get you, then definitely it is time to move on. Show me what I need to see for pile number two. What is it that they most want? How can they achieve it? A little bit more information, a little bit less squirrel, and a little bit more pearl here, please. Okay. Yeah, so this is, listen, I'm just going to say it how how I'm going to say it right here. I feel like you've been kind of mourning and sad about in your heart about something that you just kind of need to bury and be left, leave it in the dust. So example, you were expecting something. Somebody kept moving the meat, moving the treat, moving the prize and kept you on task doing and doing. And it's like, it reminds me of once upon a time when I used to cocktail waitress at a bar. Yeah. Not the best waitress. I will say that. But anyways, um, I used to, cocktail waitress on Fridays at this bar and I used to have some patrons that real, would tell me oh I'll get you next time I'll tip you next time next round next round next round never came just like tomorrow never comes 
And it's really interesting because they were the ones that wanted to appear. They would order like cognac with a back water, water back. I don't know what it's called. And all this other stuff. And you would be literally left with nothing. I'd be taking stuff to your table and never got tipped. The end of the day never came for me. Um, but you could be that person. This is just saying that you need to kind of, if you were expecting something, go ahead and mourn it and let it go release because those times are gone. And I do feel like there is a little smarmy face right here in the trees, right? Kind of looking, it's like, oh, you see this person crying. You see them just trying to kind of let go of old kind of tapes or old desires and things like that. And it's like, you've been jumping through hoops. You've been pushing that lawnmower, trying to get things done. Maybe to provide for yourself and for a loved one, for a child. But that didn't materialize. You didn't get the raise. You didn't get the respect. You didn't get the accolades for what it is that you were doing. You did not get much of anything except played with, okay? And I feel like that time for play is over and you're done. So that's what I see uh, would be a method of how to do things is go ahead and, and mourn what it is that you kind of wanted at a situation. But I think that if it's not moving... In the grand scheme of things, the way that you want it to move, you are going to let it go. Because behind you, after the Five of Cups, we have the Two of Cups, okay? That was not spilled. We have the closeness and the reciprocal bond, the tenacity of, wow, I really get you. You really get me. We're on the same page. We're on the same journey. We have a similar passion, desire, drive, and we're on a similar playing field. And that's what you have coming. What? Okay, and then I hear this, like, I'm hearing reckless light. Is it reckless light? I should know this. Guns and Roses, restless, restless light. Oh, my goodness, Griselle. How embarrassing. Yep, I just forgot all the lyrics. It's in my head, but like a faint ghost. While wow, this tree kind of sways back and forth. I hope it don't fall because it might fall on my head, but who knows. Listen, you're young at heart. The youthful energy in your eyes reveal a fun hidden treasure, allowing others to explore their own inner child. And I feel like that's what's needed. Cut out all the heaviness, all the baggage, all the expectation. If people are not meeting your expectation, then girl, go buy a lollipop. Guy, go buy a lollipop and kind of sit there and dream. Dream on, dream on. Okay, that song, yeah. But the whole point is dream about something that's going to put you on the path that you desire. If you keep meeting wall and stone and brick and door in front of you with no keys, it's time to move on. It's time to say, okay, well, I get the point. Spirit, let's just keep it moving. Keep it pushing. Here we go. Pile number two. This is definitely my pile because we're all over the place. We're like even crazier than squirrels. Pile two, show me more. Manipulator. Hmm. I have to tell you guys about this dream. I'm gonna do a dream, a dream reading, you guys. I was waiting for the third dream and I just had that. Okay, side note. Manipulator, you can transform into someone that you are not, that you are not to fit your agenda, making you extremely crafty and achieving your dreams and goals. Be sure to use your gift wisely. Well, okay, so I'm going to say that this equals to you can be a chameleon if you want. And I feel like thus far you have been a chameleon, but is it worth it? Has it gotten you what it is that you want really out of the situation of life? I would say not. And maybe that's why you have to dip your toes back into the hermit position a little bit more. Just so you could really decipher and get clear on your vision of what it is that you want. You're like, whoa, I thought I had what I want. And I thought I was close to the mark. And all of a sudden, all these stupid doors with their stupid locks that won't open. You know, like, oh my gosh. Here we are again. Here we are again. Hey. Oh, oh, what we got? We have the dead. The dead, you can communicate with the dead. It could be in the form of inner sensing, seeing, or hearing. And I think we know that with a high priestess, you have a deep connection to divine with spirit. I feel like a lot of you guys can actually connect with the spirit world. I definitely can tell you a lot of stories about my own connection with spirits. And But anyways, that's for another day. So I think that you already know this. But maybe this is a nod to just connecting to your inner wisdom. And connecting spirit, getting in tune and asking them to make it really clear what, 
how can you harness your energy, your positive and negative polarity? Because obviously there's something emotional that you're still wanting. I feel like uh, acknowledgement, acknowledgement, achievement, and things like that of your blood, sweat, and tears. And sometimes we're just not going to get that, unfortunately. So I want to give you a big old hug. If that's what you're wanting, I'm going to say spirit acknowledges, acknowledges you. Can't even say it. And um, yeah, you don't need it from people in the 3D. I mean, they're not willing to give it to you anyways. So... Take it from spirit and take it from me. Empath. You have empathic qualities being able to feel another person's emotions as well as their thoughts and energy. Having no control or awareness over this exchange. Let me tell you how true this is. I could be sitting in a room doing perfectly fine, minding my own business, and out of the blue, I start feeling all mad or all sad or anxious or start feeling insecure and I can kind of look around and go, yep, that's not my emotion. You can have it back. So it's going to be empowering for you as an empath, not only cleanse your energy. I mean, if you're at work or let's say you work in the ER or something like that, it's not going to be something that you could just step aside and go, let me do an energetic cleanse on my aura and then go back to saving a life. Life doesn't work that way. So because we know this, I feel like you can actually arm yourself by, um, I'll put a, a link a picture like into this reading somehow, or maybe I'll put it in here. Um, there's an energy field that you can do that to me looks like a vortex and it looks like this going all the way around through the through the top of your head all the way back around into mother earth and transmuting it coming right through your feet once again and to me i picture this it's like a vortex going through my body into mother earth transmuting any negative energy so that i am constantly grounded and energetically protected and as if you get as you get better with that like image or um vivid um what do they call it visualization creative visualization then you can actually expand that vortex um these squirrels are just having a field day with you can you stop entertaining because they're so cute oh my gosh anyways so you could make that vortex wider and wider and you can actually push people back and i've actually been able to have some people move away they used to live on top of me on on a second floor when I had a little baby and I would be trying to put my baby to sleep and these people, I swear it was like a herd of elephants. They had no, no care that somebody was living underneath them at all hours of the day. It was really difficult until I took control of the energy and I pushed them out and they moved. I swear, two days later they moved. Moving on. Telepathy. Your gift of telepathy is strong with the ability to read minds, project thoughts into the minds of others and understand your own body and mind as well as others. So this is actually really cool because I've never actually attempted to um, get into other people's psyches. I feel like that's invasive personally, but I definitely feel like I'm telepathic and people, especially that I care for, or if I get really close to, I actually do get some telepathic messages from them. Moving on. This is something that you want to use in a controlled manner as well, but apparently also you can use it to be aggressively assertive and implant other people's, you know, in other people's thoughts, kind of like this. If you have somebody who's hating on you or giving you a difficult time, maybe you can like suggest that they start reflecting and put a mirror in their image. Okay, well, why do you feel like you have to be this ugly? Why do you feel like you have to be this cunning? Why do you feel like you are repeating the same old behavior that you always have and you have no um, interest in self-reflection? Why is it that Pile number two has become your enemy in some way, somehow. And actually, I'm feeling a lot of secret competition with you, by the way. Pile number two, you, you don't know it, but you inadvertently invite a lot of secret competitors. And you have no idea that you're in a competition. You're just living your best life. And here we are competing, right? But I feel like if you can even picture um, a mirror re being reflected back to other people, if you're getting that vibe from them, maybe they'll start kind of self-reflecting a little bit, eh? Just saying that's possible. Overcome. Let's get it sharp in here. Sorry, these rings are a little bit long. But having gone into battle with your own dark side, you can see the divinity and sacred elements in the darkness and in destruction. Yeah. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And I feel like um, nothing is wasted. That is actually my MO. I've been through. I'm not going to say my dark times have been darker than anyone else's. I feel like it's an equal playing field. Pain is pain, but I'm going to say that I really try to think about 
um, the things that really hurt me the most, disturb me the most, or perplex me the most, and I try to utilize them into like a lesson. Well, okay, let me be real. I feel like Spirit shows me this is a lesson. <laughs> it's not like I'm trying to be like, what was the lesson in that? No, it was more like, hey, Grisel, smack upside the, oops, upside your head. Say, oops, upside your head. Yeah. So getting smacked upside the head with the reality that this was a lesson that I needed. And I feel like I can therefore kind of pass that on to other people and be a little bit lighthearted about it. But Honestly, I mean, this is just relatable information. I've received quite a few smacks upside the head from spirits saying, hey, snap out of it. And this is your mirror. And that's the things that I've had to really work on and correct. Or I've been able to equally embrace the things that it's like, wow, this was actually for me and not to me. That kind of a thing. Moving on. Detach. You're a deep thinker and a high level of emotional intelligence and awareness. Your vibration creates a ripple effect, which makes others most aware of their own actions. Oh, and over their own emotions. Yeah. So I do feel like you're, you could be a reflector in that human design thing. Mm -hmm. You could be a reflector. Okay, moving on. So last card for you because if you're still here, well, why let you go now? Uh huh. So that which you most want for pile number two. Last card for real. Oh, I don't know how to say this. Algiz, Algiz. Look at that. Algiz. Defense. Let's just get this clear because it's such a cool card. Especially with all like the dough on the property and the, is it elk? I think. Yeah. Okay. Courage, protection, independence, and higher self. And what are we talking about as being the high priest? The high priestess, whatever. You're definitely connected. Again, you could be into like um, astral projecting and things like that. But I also think that you could be a key person in healing other people. Now, one thing I'm going to say is I can't say this word either. It's sigil. S sigil? I just said it. Oh, goodness. Maybe you can find a sigil that you can actually put on your body that really helps kind of prepare you to ward off any like negativity, negative eyes, things like that. Um, and negative focus. And I feel like your hair is divine. This is actually hair. I didn't even realize that till this minute, the second. And um, yeah, your leadership is deeply coveted. I feel like even here you have a lot of experience and you have healing hands, but you can use this sigil to really help other people, to help, to awaken, whatever it is that your divinity is prompting you to do, okay? Because I feel like the mission has to do with being a high priestess and being a leader, but that's great. It's like people want to be a leader, but for what? Do you want to heal people? Do you want to just be a leader to say that you are? And I feel like that would obviously be ego talking. So that is what I have for you. I hope that some of that made some sense to you. And if it did, well, much love to you. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. And until next time, namaste. Hi, friends. My name is Griselle with Psychic MD, and I'm here to do your pick a card reading, pile number three. Pile number three, what do we have for the? We're going to get a little bit of sagey sage, just a cleansy area. Mm -hmm. Cleansy energy of anything that's happened before now. And the energies, all the things. So you chose Book of Spells with the number 22 and Learn. And I love this window. It is not unlike the window I'm staring out of currently, which is pretty cool. With the exception of the little arch right here, the window would end. It's actually a square, but it's really high. It's a high window. Pile number three, what do we have for the... Let's do an energy check. So I feel like you're starting to understand your own personal power, your own brand, I'm hearing. I feel also that um, somebody recently is overcoming a stalemate situation, meaning that it was a no contact situation or you guys dug in your heels or there was a decision that needed to be made and you just kind of put down your sword and you're like, yep, that was that. And you're reflecting a little bit upon it. Feel free to take the time you need to kind of reflect and learn the lessons that you need to in order to move forward. I just had some jumpers. Let's see what we have here. What? Mm -hmm. I love these cards. If you can't tell you guys, these are like tried and true. And you can't tell that I've just like really beat them up so much. Um, 
because they're made to look a little bit old, but yeah, they've seen better days. Pile number three, you've got the Wheel of Fortune and you have the High Priestess. And with this, I'm going to say that things are turning up for you. Your desire is to connect with Source, with Spirit, to connect with that which is very much, very much important. Here we go again. This is how I speak. Very much important. So I feel like you want things to kind of elevate. To I And I don't think that you have the actual clarity. But I feel like you're looking for solutions. You're looking for even perhaps like real spells. Um sigils anything that would really warrant something for you to do and help you to elevate and i think you could be looking into those things now on this one i actually want to take a peek at the books because there's a lot of stuff going on here you could be really good at candle magic you could be connected to the craft right and the key words here is seek advice further develop your skills now, the Tarot Companion, that makes perfect sense of this, would be Eight of Pentacles. This is about study. It's about fortitude. It's about tenacity. It's about looking for answers and not going to bed until you find them. It's about deep diving and doing research. And it's about elevation, the same way that the Wheel of Fortune is. Just ask any witch, and they'll tell you they, too, have a sacred book of spells. This is a compass that guides a craft and journal that records their workings. Some spell books are passed down through generations, handed down from one healer to the next. You may stumble upon a tattered old book in an old bookshop or feel caught to purchase something from a favorite author. At the beginning of your magical journey, seeing the help of others who have already gone through the trials you may face can save you a lot of time and effort. Before you know it, the student will become the master and one day you too can pass your teachings on to another. So basically, this is about you searching. You want to search and find the path that elevates you. And the path that you want to find, I feel, is in that in, in becoming a high priest or high priestess. Now, I think I've mentioned it a few times on this channel. I'm not like a spell caster. I don't, that's just not my thing. Um, not in the typical sense that you would think of witches, okay? So the spell, the spell I would do. If you want to call it that, I like uh, a little bit candle magic. I use a lot of white candles to meditate, pray, and maybe protection, but that's it. I don't do like return to senders or my favorite in Spanish, shut your mouth spells. None of those things. Or my other personal favorite, bind them to you or dominate. <laughs> so that's not in my repertoire. That might be you, but, um, and that's fine. No judgment here. It's just not something that... I'm comfortable with, so I, I don't do if I'm not comfortable. Moving on. Pile number three, what do we have for the... Let me do an energy check for pile number three to make sure this is your pile. And if this resonates, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you feel led to sharing. The Knight of Swords. Okay, so this knight could be somebody coming towards you wanting rapid answers. Maybe you could be the one wanting rapid answers. And then we have a double... We do, huh? There's always a caveat to everything, isn't there? So the devil card, this is addiction. This is affliction. This is dominated by things, by behavior, by actions, by addictions. This could be blood, sweat, and tears being poured into something that isn't meant for you. And perhaps this could mean that this is really a catalyst into what it is that you want. And that's why we're here. This can mean even perhaps like an obsession with a person or somebody that has this demeanor that they're just kind of quick on their feet. They're all about their brains um, and their brawn and not necessarily about sensitivity or emotion, things like that. If this is a prospective partner, a boyfriend or somebody you're dating or somebody you're interested in, this could be stating here that your current status is that you want things to go on the upswing you want a peek behind the veil of what's really going on and the catalyst to all of this is this connection that way you don't understand is actually going to catapult you into your own spiritual well-being spirituality and that your desire and a need to look for spells to really kind of manipulate or kind of air bend or draw energy and kind of change things along is really um a deep dive into something that's going to spark the beginning of a major journey and that will change your trajectory of your entire life. Now, when you look back upon this point in time, it's going to be 
kind of a blip on the radar as far as the catalyst goes. And you'll see that this was for a bigger, bigger reason. The chariot coming out here strong once again. So yeah, this is a confirmation. This is about where you are going. And I feel like you're starting to see that energies are being separated into the pros and the cons. And what you're starting to see as well is, okay, is my energy in alignment with other people's or vice versa? You can look at it from whatever perspective. But I feel like this is going to give you a deeper sense of how to offload. How do I offload energy that just isn't mine? If a person is on the trajectory of, look, we need to vibe, we need to conquer, we need to do this, we need to glow up, we need to step on next, we need to climb that corporate ladder, we need to you know, go from zero to hero and achieve what it is that we want. And we have all these stats and we have all these grids and all of this thing is quite lovely if you're on the same page. But I feel like that's not the case, okay? And there's a reason for that. With the number seven, I feel like it's a lot more of a spiritual reason than you would want to give credit to. And even now, probably a lot of you guys will just click off because you're like, yeah, I don't want to, I'm not trying to hear that. Look, I've been there too. <laughs> and I too was not trying to hear that as well, okay? So in my personal life, if you're still here, let me grab that one moment, please. And if you're not, I'm going to share with you that I had a similar situation where it wound up being like a catalyst for my spiritual growth and trajectory. So I'm going to say that once upon a time in a land, land long ago, I too had an infatuation. I too had what I deemed was a love and... Um, I had separated myself from being my higher self. I guess I had really kind of come down to the same level as someone else once upon a time. And the reason I say that is because I already knew that we were not, uh, after being together for a little bit, that is, um, you know, after the lies kind of dissolved and I was able to see through them, I came to a point where I'm like, wow, we're nothing alike and what, our trajectory is nothing alike. And I really thought that you had the same love for spirit and that you had the same desire or same purity and things like Bottom line, we were not of the same cloth. But the cool part is that this led me to an obsession. Mm, how seedy is that? But uh, that's not the cool part, really. The cool part about that is that that obsession led me down many steps and roads that I really had to document and look at and reflect upon. And in the end, I did come to my own as a high priestess. My hunches were verified. They were very specifically verified. I feel like that's when I really fully embraced my spirituality. And so I can thank that person, that scallywag. <laughs> for that, it's like, hey, I found myself. Thanks for being a jerk and uh, a total liar. <laughs> but I mean, that was another thing that just really served as a foil in my life. I was able to really see the contrast of who I was as opposed to who this other person was and where I wanted it to go as far as like my own spiritual integrity. And even though I'm going to say once upon a time, I was willing to compromise my integrity because of so-called love or an idea or a gratification that I really want to fulfill at that point in time. Um, spirit showed me quite clearly that this too was addictive behavior. And so you could be in that same position. So no shade on that. I'm j I just want to share that real quick because if that's your story and you happen to still be here, I hear you and I see you. Okay. Moving on. This is what you don't see. The King of Cups. I feel like you have somebody who's been eyeballing you, looking after you, pining after you. And this could be yeah, romantic, but this could be even um, somebody who just cares for you deeply. They are submerged in water with a cadaver head right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see if we can get that in here. And this is somebody who once upon a time used to be in love with love, their heart upon their sleeve, that kind of a thing. Now for a rare few of you, that's gonna be the same person over here. And this could be a situation that in your younger years, you were teamed up with somebody or in a relationship with somebody who was completely different. They, they acted like militant, like do this, do that. And there was no room for error. There was absolutely no mercy on their end. And yet they were setting their ways and doing whatever it is that they wanted. I feel like this person could be looking at you from afar and submerged in their own feelings and emotions. I feel like maybe they attained the level of, um, I don't know, like they, they moved up the ranks and whatever it is that they deemed important at the time, they achieved it. They went for it. They got it. As most of us do, you know, two and two equals four every time if you 
take 10 years to achieve it or if you take two years to achieve it or one it doesn't make a difference so i feel like this person really if it's the same person they achieve what it is that they wanted and once upon a time they were in love with love as well and they had been through the ringer a little bit i feel like this emotion has got them all the way up to their nose and they're about ready to drown in emotion it could be remorse regret nostalgia i mean emotion encompasses all the things that we feel as human beings and so I don't really feel like this is neither here nor there. I'm just going to say that this person could, in the end, achieve what it is that they want and still be really unhappy and be wistful looking at you. Look at those waters run deep. This emotion could run deep. And if you're in the beginning of this cycle in the now, if you're tethered to somebody that you are like deeply attracted to and love with or really trying to bind to you in some way, shape, or form, then I feel like this could be, you know, who knows, 10 years down the road. Um, 20 years down the road, something like that, which none of us want to hear, but here we are, and here I am stating that. I feel like this person could just be looking at you from afar. Now, I don't think that that is the point, really, to you being here. Um, I think that spirit has bigger things for you. So let's explore that if you are still here. Pile number three, if this makes sense, please let me know in the comments below. If you feel led to, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. Show me how to get what it is that pile number three wants. I'd like to know what that looks like, please. The five of swords and the two of swords. Well, that's quite unexpected. I feel like this has to do with wrestling. Wrestling. Five of swords is like doing... Okay. Doing things regardless of who you hurt, what you do. So this, I feel like, is more fighting within yourself. This is getting clear. And if you're willing to kind of go um, against the grain and do things against people's will. Because I feel like if you're going to bind somebody to you, then um, if they're not with you, it's not th like they want to be with you. So if you're doing that against somebody's will, you're manipulating somebody's energy. That's my feeling on it. You definitely have to do what you got to do. And I can't help but notice that the five plus a two equals a seven, which is your higher purpose. That's a reason why you're really here. But I'm going to move on to the 3D answer. The two of swords. You have come to a situation where you have dug in your heels. They have dug in their heels. And this is what you want. And I have been there too. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay, so let's see a little bit more about this. The Book of Spells. Learn. Yeah, we're going to learn this one way or another. I just had a jumper. And the way that fell out, all dramatic like. One moment, please. I'm going to get that. So yesterday, this has nothing to do with anything or anyone. But um, yesterday, actually, <laughs> I actually went to the store that has like a bunch of like Mexican things, you know, like uh, pinatas and all this stuff. Because it just makes me really nostalgic. I'm not Mexican, but... I feel like they kind of embrace me like their own people. And I just really appreciate their arc and folklore and all that stuff. And I'm very tall. And so I was walking and I literally knocked my head on this star. It like stabbed me in the crown. I was like, oh, that's not embarrassing at all. So I just had that idea. I don't know why. Sorry, pile three. My camera just went kind of crazy. Anyways, that was quite interesting. So maybe you are getting a lot of crown chakra action like when I started waking up where my crown chakra was expanding, it physically hurt. My crown chakra, like the top of my head, it felt like I had like a dagger stabbing on my scalp. Any of those things were um, really indicative of where I was headed in life. So the Ace of Wands right here, this is a mover and a shaker, and it landed upside down, and it actually kind of rotated, free fell onto the floor. And I feel like this is an indication that it's supporting what I just told you. I feel like this connection, if you're trying to bind someone to you or get that connectivity in such a manner that it's against their will, I think that, yes, you will learn. We all will learn according to like consequences of our own actions and things. And don't think I haven't tried it too, let me tell you. And have I learned the hard way? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, because I'm hard-headed too. So listen, Spirit is saying, direct your energy towards the future, towards movement, your answer, your desire, your bullseye, your sacral chakra, not your sacral, your, um, da -da -da -dee -da -la -da -da. oh my goodness, my brain, <sighs> my brain and these squirrels, they aren't jiving today, hold on, 
Uh, solar plexus, yeah. So head towards your solar plexus. It is what you desire, like what you most desire. And that's what's going to help you the quickest. But otherwise, if you're like me, it's going to take you time to learn. And you're going to revert back to like what it is that you desire and allow those things naturally to, to run its course and teach you lessons. I've been hard-headed, let me tell you, and I haven't wanted to learn those lessons, and it took me forever, so I don't wish that on anyone. And really, that's the only reason why I'm trying to share with you, like, my own personal life, but we all have to learn how we all have to learn. Good grief. Hello. Prying eyes. Someone has their eyes on you. Okay. So interesting, because this person is even, I can't tell if this person is, like, a part of the wood, or they got what, or what is, or if they wish they would, you know? But here you are like creating, you're doing your own thing, you're minding your own business. And I feel like people have their eye on you. Now, if this goes back to the person that way back when you were connected with and all the things, they still have emotions. They could be, you know, they're prying eyes, eyeballing you. Big surprise. Forgotten ghost. Let me tell you. Let me tell, reunion, what? Okay, well. It could be that thing. I don't know. One moment, please. Because, of course, I dropped another card. And it happened to be this card. Manipulator. You can transform into someone that you are not to fit your agenda and making you extremely crafty and achieving your dreams and goals. Be sure you use your gift wisely. So I feel like you've learned a lot, a lot of lessons. And again, this has talking about like magic and things like that. But I mean, in the end, everything is a spell, isn't it? And that's why they call it spelling. And you can speak things into existence. So you could be having a reunion coming up with someone from the past, whether by spell work or by time or by the natural flow of the world of consequences of energy. And I feel like this could blow your mind, the number 20. So I don't know, the number 20 just reminds me of like another, like two cycles of completion. Maybe perhaps is stating that you are somebody who achieved your highest form of enlightenment or you're like very close to. I don't want to say highest because we're always growing, right? We're always expanding, growing, and stretching. But I feel like this other person could also have just recently completed Dark Knight of the Soul. I feel like both of you guys at least have completed one cycle of Dark Knight of the Soul. And if you know, you know, that comes with a lot of physical symptoms, a lot of major wild changes in your life that could look like mental illness or midlife crisis or all the above. Now, I'm going to say that uh, this person could really definitely have their eye on you and... It could blow your mind, okay? I mean, this person is poised right here to make a judgment call. And they have, I, okay, I feel like there is somebody around you, a ghost of Christmas past, forgotten ghost, right? Who wants to hit the send button. I feel like they continue like writing messages, writing, deleting, writing, writing, deleting, that kind of a thing. And they continue deleting messages. They could have even reached out to you. You could have spoken to this person from way back when, or this person from the past, or this person that wants to get a gauge on the temperature, your current temperature, by the way, pile number three. Um, and so, yeah, that could be happening very soon. I'm going to say within the next two months, two hours, two months, two weeks, two days, any of them. Last message for pile three, because this has been long enough. The Knight of Wands. This could be like, hey, remember me? Hey, remember me? I have a thing for you, and I still have a thing for you, and that kind of a thing. All the things. The Knight of Wands. In and out energy. This knight is one to want to want to conquer. They want to conquer. They want to use your wand. They could have wood to show you. Um... And you could be a welcoming that energy. I mean, I don't know your life. That's totally up to you. But I would definitely be wary of that. Maybe what you want isn't for the highest good. I would consider that. Then we have coming out the channel. Some of these cards came out at a different reading. You might want to look at those as well. The Chandler, with a heightened consciousness, having power to channel divine messages, you have the ability to open people's eyes to the unforeseen. Mm -hmm. So that is what I have for you. Pile number three, let me know how this resonated. And I hope that this made sense. Hmm. Echo I'm hearing echolocation as well. Kind of like bats. 
sonic hearing, that kind of a thing. Anyways, that's what I got for you. Much, much love to you. Until next time, namaste.